All right, I wanna make one thing very clear to start. In the grand scheme of YouTube, I would not consider myself a graphics card reviewer. I like GPUs, I get them in, I play a lot of competitive games, uh, I edit videos, I do occasional CAD stuff for work. This is like, I enjoy GPUs. When new ones come out, I get excited, but I don't consider myself a GPU reviewer. I only look at these things from the perspective of a gamer, like would I actually buy these things with my own money? So in front of me are two new cards from Intel, the ARC A750 and the A770. And these are, to me, the most interesting and arguably the most important pair of products that Intel has put out this year. So what makes them special, the marketing angle that Intel has come out of the gate with is pricing. These are priced very competitively. The Intel branded ones are entitled limited edition, even though there's nothing limited edition about them, you can get them anywhere. Uh, the A750 goes for 290 bucks and then the A770 goes for 350 bucks. Now, if you benchmark them, they are excellent in synthetic benchmarks, like surprisingly good. You can clearly tell these have a lot of potential in the hardware itself. These can keep up with like a 3060 Ti, 3070 even, just on the synthetic benchmarks, or at least some synthetic benchmarks. Now, when I did some actual game performance, originally I started off with like a, a high-end system, a 12900K, I was like, I just wanna see what these can do at the top end, but I realized, if you're looking at a card like this at this kind of price range, chances are you don't have like top end budget, right? Realistically, you have something that might be a little bit older, something that's a little bit like mid to upper range. So in the end, I did most of my benchmarking on a 10th generation i5 and performance out of the gate was very, very good for the money. But as I benchmarked this more, I kept asking myself this question, like would I actually buy this? Would I spend money on one of these cards instead of one of the competitors, like either a 6600 XT from AMD or like a 3060 or maybe even a 3060 Ti from Nvidia. And it's a complicated question, but the more I benchmarked it, the more I realized that the answer was seemingly pretty obvious. So let's start off with that whole price to performance conversation, because again, Intel's angle right from the rip was like, hey, we got something that's got the best price to performance ratio on the market, okay? So Intel claims that the average 3060 is like $418. But when you look online, I'm like, is it really though? Because you can get a 3060 for 380, maybe 370 bucks in some places. It's not like the best 3060, but it is a 3060 and will hit around this kind of performance, okay? So if you take that price at 370 or 380 bucks, you get a different kind of price to performance ratio comparison. And then a whole other form of mathematics applies to the AMD cards, right? But the point I'm trying to make is that right now, especially with the, you know, the crypto market smashing down and like the, there's a huge influx of used GPUs, it's not that these are a poor value proposition, it's just that they're not as amazing as Intel seems to be pushing them to be. They're good, but come on, man, so is everybody else at this price point right now. The second thing I wanna talk about is the drivers. So before Intel sent these cards over, I had, very low expectations. The A380, like the GPU that they released earlier this year, it was it was heartbreaking to see how poor that thing performed, merely because the drivers were just so underbaked. Uh, these are a lot better. These honestly feel like a completely different generation of drivers, and maybe they are. A lot of current games and upcoming games use DirectX 12, and those, well, many of them will run great on these cards, but there's a huge slew of older games, a lot of titles that I personally play that just run, they don't run well on this, and they should be based on the hardware kind of capabilities, but they don't, and it's entirely a driver issue. So the thing with drivers is that they completely define the experience for GPUs. Like it doesn't matter how pretty they look or how ugly they look or how loud or quiet they are, if the driver experience is not refined, the product takes a huge hit. Some of the stuff just runs at like 40% of the performance. Some stuff doesn't run at all. Some stuff just stutters, crashes. And this is launch time, right? This isn't like beta time. We're like testing this stuff out months ahead. It's just weird to see this kind of hardware, this kind of powerful hardware kind of under deliver from what I would expect. Not just expect, like what it should do because the hardware is very capable. You saw the synthetic benchmarks. This is powerful stuff. It's just the software isn't there yet. Now, the silver line to all of this is that it is software, right? The truth is this can be fixed. And if you look at AMD's track record, like if you look back, I don't know, two, three generations ago, AMD's driver situation was terrible. I don't want to say as bad as this, but it was also really poor and they've kind of climbed out of that hole and they've AMD now has stuff that's pretty decent with software. NVIDIA's drivers 
rip on them for all the pricing issues that they have, but their drivers are on point. This, I don't know if this can get good enough because those guys, AMD, particularly NVIDIA, have so many years of just driver making, right? Their driver stack is just filled with replacement shaders and so much stuff that makes old games really good. This, like you can't do all of that overnight. That takes literal years to develop. I don't know how Intel will be able to do this anytime soon. The thing is, there's so much I like about these cards, like the AV1 encoding, the ray tracing capabilities, like they're strangely good. And like, there's, it looks good, right? The 770 has like RGBs that you can adjust, that like it does need a cable, which is kind of annoying, but once you do it once, it's you can unplug it. Uh, but it's a nice looking piece of hardware, arguably the best RGB system we've ever seen in a graphics card, powerful hardware, but god damn, the software issues, just hold this thing back. Now, the thing I, the, like, I keep driving on this whole, like, software issue. The thing is, if you're buying this for games, right, unless you have a very limited, like, scope of games that you play and you've checked the list and you're like, okay, my games are fully supported on this thing, we're good to go, right? But for most people, they have a library of games that they like to play. And you, if you ever want to play older games or even, like, newer games that are made by indie developers that don't use DX12, there's so many kind of... There's so many ways that this card can theoretically screw you over in the future. And if you're spending money on this stuff, if you're spending like hard earned cash, if you're that Chad gamer that's like, I wanna buy a $300 GPU, it doesn't make sense to buy these. I hate to say it, but it just does not make sense to buy one of these cards right now. Now, if you fast forward in time, like eight months from now, maybe even six months from now, and the driver issues are resolved, and there's just like way more support for non-DX12 games, and just stuff is more stable, yeah, it makes sense, sure, right? But right now, if you're looking at this, or you want a GPU today, and you're looking at this stuff, I don't know, man. I wouldn't spend the money. I hate saying this. And the thing that bothers me about this statement of like, I wouldn't buy these is, I want to support this, right? This is a third player to the whole duopoly of GPUs. We need this, and Intel has been really awesome with this launch. Intel's normally not like this, right? When it comes to their CPU, they're kind of like shady with what they show and what they don't show, because they have big D energy when it comes to their CPUs. They know they have something awesome, so they present it and market it a certain way, but with these cards, they knew they were the underdogs, right? They were so open, they were so transparent with the good things and the bad things about them. It's so refreshing to see this coming from Intel, but it's only because this is their, you know, they, they wear their position in the market, right? Uh, I like it though. I like Intel caring about the consumer and caring about pricing. This is so refreshing, but I still wouldn't buy it.